All right, just a review of how to add color to our logos in assignment four. Get down to assignment four, where we post. And from the refined sketch, we brought it into Illustrator, right? So I'm going to open up that Illustrator file. Illustrator files are AI files. They'll open automatically in Adobe Illustrator. And you'll see that I have traced here all as vectors. If I use the small selection tool in Illustrator, I can see all the anchor points. I have my logo traced as vectors. Important that it doesn't have any white shapes in it. So one way to check that is to use the large selection tool, select all of it, and drag it off onto the gray. And if you see anything other than black shapes, that means you need to cut them out or you need to delete those white layers. And I can help you with that individually. Then I'm going to bring it back onto the artboard. And we're going to save this as what I call a portable vector file. But it's a type of vector file that can be opened in other programs, right? Because AI files are a working format only for Adobe Illustrator. So first I save my AI version, then I go to save as, and I'm gonna save it to my computer. And under format, I'm gonna change it from an AI file to an SVG, which is the most standard portable vector format. It's called a scalable vector graphic. It's the oldest form of vector graphic. So first, just a standard SVG, 1.1, that's fine, keep all the defaults. Then I'm going to say save a copy, and I'm going to save it as an Illustrator EPS file. Now, EPS is Adobe's version of an SVG. It's an Adobe's version of a portable vector format, and it works better in Photoshop than SVGs do in certain circumstances. So just save it as an EPS as well. So we have three file formats that support vectors, AI, SVG, and EPS. I'm going to ask you guys to create it as an AI file, but then also save it as an EPS. And that EPS file, which looks a little weird because it doesn't have a, a preview icon in this newest Mac operating system, I'll mark this as purple. That is what you're going to bring into Photoshop. Now, this is how you do it. You do not right-click it and open it with Photoshop, even though that will work. And if you double-click it, it will open up in Photoshop. If you do that, it will force you to rasterize it. And you don't want to rasterize it. You want to keep it as a vector. So how do we do that? How do we play with vectors in Photoshop like we did for exercise two? We're going to say File New, create a new file, make it 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That's our, our lab resolution and our standard size. We're going to keep all the defaults. RGB color mode, that's important, and white as the background. And then we're going to open it up. And strangely, I think it did pixels. Let me check the image size. Yeah, strangely, it did 8 pixels by 10 pixels instead of 8 inches by 10 inches but I can change that right away. That's why it's nice to have your rulers open. So you can see that you're eight by 10 by 350. You'll see it in the bottom left-hand corner. Now I'm gonna take that EPS file I just saved from Illustrator and I'm gonna drag and drop it in. That keeps it as a smart object, keeps it as a vector. And you'll see it will fill the space edge to edge, but I don't want it to look that way. I wanna think of the black space around my image as the black mat that's going to go around my print. So I need to size it to look good. To do that, I hold down Option and just drag from a corner, and that will center it towards the middle. And I decide how big it should be on the page. Let's say I think it looks like that. I kind of squint, say that looks good. Now when I hit Return, it will show it at that resolution. But because it's a smart object, if I were to resize it, it would always be as clean as possible at whatever resolution it is. 
and we print from raster files. So this is what we now will make print ready. So to do that, what I do is I say file and I say save as, and I'm going to keep it as a PSD file, but with my name and assignment four and a description. This is my black shape logo. As a PSD, I'll save it to the desktop. Next, to make it print ready, I need to flatten it. And you'll find directions for how to make it print ready in our class Dropbox, which you'll find under links. And you go, as soon as you're signed into the class Dropbox, you can say not now, not now, wants to sell us more data. Uh, click on the first folder, which is digital art class files, and then on the first folder, flatten TIFF files to print. You'll know it's the right one because I have this typo of the capital F and the capital L. So you just do the first folder and then the first folder within that folder. Within that, you'll see our semester code and your individual folder. So this was mine, right? And that's where I'm going to bring in, once I'm ready, my print ready files. But I'm not ready yet because what needs to go into this folder, if you notice, it's flattened TIFF files to print. And at the bottom of that folder, you're going to see instructions for how to make them print ready. So everything I'm talking about right now, you'll see in these instructions. But you can also use this video. So I'm in, I have my, my best resolution Photoshop file open. Once it looks good and it's at the right dimensions to print on an 8x10, and I can check that with image size, 8x10 by at least 350 pixels per inch, right? Now I flatten it. I go to Layer Flatten Image. This is dangerous because as soon as you do that, you lose your layers in your PSD. So we have to save it as something other than a PSD. So what I do is I say File, Save As, which allows us to rename it. And I put a capital P and a capital R in front of it for print ready. And then instead of saving it as a Photoshop file, I save it as a TIFF file. <clears throat> that is an archive format raster archive format <laughs> that works between multiple programs. And then I'm going to get my TIFF options. The reason we use TIFF is because it is a lossless format. It won't lose any quality, and we can actually compress it. And if we want lossless compression where it loses no quality, we have to choose LZW. So LZW is our lossless compression format. You always want to use it with TIFF. It makes it take up less space, and it doesn't hurt the quality at all. It just takes a little bit longer to save and a little bit longer to open. And the way it's been explained to me is this is like origami folding of the data. So the TIFF algorithm like just is a flow chart that optimizes space, whereas like a PSD just doesn't save any extra data. So now I can look on my desktop and I see that TIFF. I'm going to mark that as purple. That is the print ready file that I put into my, my Dropbox folder that's under flatten TIFF files to print. And all of you guys, because you're my morning class, you're going to be SP24-1 for spring 2024-1, and you'll just find your name. So here's mine, and I'm going to just slip my file into there. You just drag and drop the TIFF, but they should all be TIFFs. And TIFFs can, can have a file format at the end, which is uh, period TIFF, like it will out of Photoshop or period TIF, which will be what it's like out of photo P. But that is now ready to print. Okay. Now I go back to my Photoshop file, the one I saved to my desktop before I flattened it, right? That keeps it as a smart object. And now to add color to my black logo, I make a duplicate of my smart object, Command J. Keeps it placed in the same place, keeps it at the right format, and it's a vector. And then I double click on the layer to open up layer styles. And this is how I recommend we color our first vector logo. And the easiest way is to use color overlay and just pick a color. I'm going to color it a little bit differently than I did before. I'm going to choose one of the campus colors, this fluorescent 
green, set it to normal mode, and 100% opaque. So there you go. But I don't love it. There are other things I can do, but already that's a color logo. What can I do? I can add a satin overlay to it. And satin, I'm going to make this a darker green. You can then play with all these settings, right? I'm going to set it to multiply, and I'm going to set its opacity to be bigger. And you can see that then kind of runs this soft core shadow through every vector shape. Like it's made of satin. Maybe I like that. I can play with the angle of how it does that. And then I can play with the size of it. It's kind of a slightly more complicated inner glow or inner shadow. So what if I like that? Good. Now I'm going to put it on three different backgrounds just to test it. So that's white. I'm going to duplicate the white and then I'm going to say edit fill with middle gray, 50% gray. Okay. Do I like how it looks on that? Yeah, kind of, but I think it needs maybe a little bit more. You know, if it was on like a gray background or, or a mid-range color, it's not going to show up as much as I want. So maybe I add a drop shadow behind it. And I can play with the drop shadow. I can play with its opacity. I can play with its size. And because it's doing it based on a vector smart object, all of these layer styles are going to be perfectly clean. And then I might try maybe a stroke as well. But I think I'm going to go with a stroke that's on the inside. And then I can play with the size of that stroke. So I really want it to show up strong. You can always zoom out, make sure it's still readable. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Now, now I'm going to check it on my last background, make a duplicate of the gray background, say edit fill and fill it with black. Because if it can look good on black, on gray, and on white, you've got a nice versatile logo solution. And good logos are clear, versatile, and engaging. And then I think, okay, for on white, I don't want the stroke. Or maybe I want this stroke to be a slightly different color than white. Maybe I want it to be the, the dark blue of our campus logo. That looks a little bit more Mayan, some of like my influences. But then I have to see what that looks like on black. And yeah, that still reads pretty well. And on gray, yeah, that reads even better. So you can make little adjustments this way. And then if I want to do other things, all you have to do is click on your layer style effects and you can add to them, alter them. I can give it a slight texture. My favorite textures to use of the ones that are built in, because you can always load your own. I don't know why they give you this as a default, because this is kind of a hideous texture. Of, but I go to, to water, the last water one. You can do kind of crackles. Oh, that works well for for the Mayan idea. And then you can actually set the size of it as well. So when we print our logos, we're going to be printing them on white. So that's a good way to kind of optimize your color. But you want it to look good on all, all backgrounds. So I'm going to take the opacity of that drop shadow down a bit. Yeah, and that's what I want to print. So now I save this first as a PSD. So save as. And this is going to be my PSD that has my color shape logo. Never hurts to, to save it as a PSD. Then, to make it print ready, if I want to print my color version, which I think I do, I'm going to say layer flatten image. That's the dangerous bit. And then file save as print ready with PR in front, and then not as a Photoshop document, but as a TIFF. And then your TIFF will always have LZW, then all the other defaults. All right, and now I'm going to mark that purple, that TIFF file, my print-ready one. 
Make sure your print ready files have PR in front of them and have your name and 